Okay, hold on a minute. I need to change one of the destinations. Your hair has gotten long, both of you, Cheryl and. Yeah, <laughs> I've just been on the grow method. Let it grow, let it grow. Me too, me too. <laughs> Same here. I was surprised that when mine grew out, it got curly. I've never had curly hair. And so this is kind of a novelty. <laughs> Maybe you come to Houston. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that that humidity is going to kill me here. So I get it. <laughs> humidity will go. I know. But I understand there's some congratulations are in order, Miss Linda. Julie just kind of got me up to speed. That's fantastic. Congrats. Oh, yeah. oh, which part? The, um, yeah. the wedding part. I had no oh, yeah. idea you got married. That's awesome. I know. It's yeah. been great. He's wonderful. Just wonderful. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. It's an anniversary oh. now, right? Yes. <laughs> We're past that, and we're it, we're in the middle of adoption too. We're oh, I didn't know that. Oh my gosh! Congratulations! No, I didn't hear about that part. That's fantastic! Wow, look at how much your life has changed in just a short time. <laughs> yes, dramatically, in a good way. Awesome. Very awesome! Congratulations! <laughs> and we are truly live. <laughs> oh, yay! yay. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Is the connection okay for you guys? I'm little, not little hearing choppy. her. You're a little yeah, choppy. choppy. New York, you're a little choppy. But it, it does say live. It does say live. Well, we're here to talk about the uh, the big event coming up in Houston. Yeah. Well, Linda, why don't you bring us in since you are uh, our typical MC anyway? This will be a <laughs> fabulous transition, and then we'll just kind of take it from there. New York, yeah, it was uh, freezing up. I yeah. think you're back, though. Are you back? Yes, I'm back. And okay. I, I say that let's just jump. Let's just, let's just start talking about the band and introduce yourself to the audience that's listening in. And, you know, the Tokarin, do you want to start? Well, I, I was, since I'm in Houston right now, uh, I am so looking forward to everybody coming out here for this event on November the 6th. And I know that uh, uh, Dr. Karen, can I just call you Dr. Karen? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be your people and, uh, and Dr. Cheryl, that uh, you guys went to the Arizona one most recently, right? And Yorka, you did as well. So I'm I was only to... there via video, so I couldn't make it to Arizona. I'll be in Houston, so but my video made it there. I'm told. Yeah, so we're good, good. good. We're getting the rain out of the way for this, and we're really excited because, uh, you know, from the beginning, these events that are leadandempowerher.com is where you go for the link, and she talks. It's like TED Talks. And if there's a better explanation, please please give it. But every time I have gone to one of these events, I have felt so good, so empowered, so enlightened by all of these uh, fellow sisters, you know, just who uh, inspire me. So I'm really excited for it. And I'm Linda Martin, by the way, uh, Dr. Julie Ducharme and I and Karen and Cheryl, I believe you were there from the beginning as well, just started. This. Yes, yes. Uh, so it was just we hit the ground running when we first did our first one and it was just so amazing the turnout the response and so kept it going from there sure, well yeah. i think part Thank of the you, magic Linda. it has is because of being women for other women this is not something in my generation that there were a lot of women mentors and so now it is really wonderful to be able to share some of the, the good the bad the ugly help others because we're just ahead of them in the process and maybe we can help guide them a little bit so they have an easier time than we did and that's really the ultimate goal I, yeah. I think it was my it was my first time participating and thank you for all being here and sharing this event to everybody that's listening and that will be listening later. Um, I think it was amazing because uh, Dr. Karen and Dr. Julie did, and I've been to a lot of business events and really into business. I, I like all that entrepreneurial thing. And they brought the business, but the, 
brought the fun side of business together and they make it experiential. You know, it, the, there was really people coming together, having fun, taking, you know, taking pictures, having uh, chatting, learning, because we had classes, we had speakers that told the story and I think we got inspired to go back. So all the group of women that were there, that were lucky to be part of the group, um, they took something with them, Yeah, you know, and what they going to transform that little something, that little seed, who knows? Right. I think the sky's the limit. Yeah, no, thank you for that, New Yorker. And New Yorker has been very humble because she is one of our lady veterans uh, from the military as well. Um, and she served in the Navy, what, over 20 years? Um, Army. So, oh, excuse me, Army. Guys, you got to give us a hula for that, right? Um, yeah. yeah, Army. Yeah. Um, Army. So, yeah, we have a love hate relationship with the Army because I'm in the Marines. So, um, yeah. I didn't do it on purpose though this time, I promise. Um, so New York has uh, served in the Army. I, I'm a uh, Marine Corps retired uh, myself, but I uh, lead in well, and power her. the Air Force because I'm an Air Force wife of 23 okay. years. So and, and <laughs> and we'll get all the services in there. <laughs> Air Force. Um, and so, but lead in and power her, um, the events, uh, you know, for She Talks really is our biggest fundraiser that goes towards Synergy Learning Institute, which is the nonprofit vocational college. And the mission really is to help veterans in their transition, um, you know, from service to the civilian workforce. And so it, we've been on this tour with She Talks and we go from, you know, city to city with our empowerment team. And Linda Martin's been a part of that from the very beginning. And it's just been so wonderful to get feedback from um, people just like New Yorker who um, have served our country and said that, you know, Lead and Empower Her, She Talks is a place to come where you get the business, the professional side, but also the fun um, and the, the camaraderie that you can just come together with other um, people and, and learn. But also it's like a family after you leave that you stay connected for some time. So it's just a beauty to hear that. I, I think that's so true. And I, what I what I notice that having when you go to these events and you feel empowered and you feel inspired and other women are lifting you up, and we're doing the same for others with whatever expertise. And, and this this group of four here, and there are going to be many more there, just have such incredible talent in guiding and helping in different areas and smarts. Oh my gosh, brain power in the room. But um, and so I love being a part of that. And, you know, when you go into your own life, you see so many people who would just push you aside. They're not honest. They don't have integrity. And we've all dealt with that uh, with men and women. But it's just so nice to be in a room full of inspiration. Yes. Thank you for that, Linda. Um, and, and I love how you brought in, like, you know, our expertise in different areas and different industries and willingness to help each other. Linda comes from several years of experience in the media and broadcast industry um, and, you know, is able to talk about her experience there. You know, that's that's not an easy role to be in, you know, as a woman. And just to be able to talk from her experience and kind of like the successes and, you know, what she would have done differently and what, um, you know, and, and and what she learned from that. And she's open and honest with that and be able to share with others and, you know, give you an opportunity, like you said, to sit down with people that you normally wouldn't be able to. And that's what she talks is about. I was just going to jump in just because a lot of times when I've done coaching, media coaching, for instance, for people who are transitioning out of the military and they're going out on a public platform and they say, I'm used to always, you know, saying, you know, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, you know, all these different things and, and having to go out and talk about yourself and, you know, promote yourself in a different way. And sometimes people ask, dumb questions <laughs> and you have to you have to be able to answer it with grace and you know just so that because they're watching not just what you're saying but how you're saying it so sure and being then, able to be vulnerable is a real difficult thing because I, when things go right it's easy 
when things don't go right and you can show them the lessons of grace and elegance under pressure, we don't like to show ourselves at our least popular. We like the glam gal. We like when it's all going well and everything. When it isn't is when the integrity comes out and when the heavy lifting comes out. When you have people who are willing to share that and to hold your hand when you're doing it, that's the love, that's the power, that's the magic that really happens. Yeah, I love how you touched on that. I mean, and Cheryl, you, you've been um, sharing a lot of your magic as you've helped so many um, people just be able to publish, right, their books. I mean, you're an expert in that. You've been um, a publisher um, for, for several, um, you know, uh, experts in their fields. So, yes. Yep. Um, you bring I, that I was looking. Table. Yeah, I would love to hear a story about some because everybody feels like they have a book in them, right? Everyone wants oh, to do that. But do you have a story where somebody was like, I, I don't know if I can do this? I'm sure you have a lot of them where they really kind of found their way and became a success in their own right. Well, I can use me as that example because when I graduated with my doctorate, I didn't want to see anything with those 150 words ever again in my lifetime. And my mentor kept pressuring and pressuring and pressuring to publish. And that's what we're supposed to do in academia. Karen, you know this. I mean, that's our whole point. I didn't for three years. And then I finally got started, put my toe in the water. It didn't go well. And then finally, I designed the company and I did it. Now, 52 books later, now I'm the success story. But I had to start with the first one. And I was a late bloomer because I couldn't quite get with the program and was one of those always about the book, always about the book. And so years later, I went back to my mentor. It's like, do you think I have enough yet? And he finally really goes, it took you long enough to get your first one. But that's <laughs> part of it is you just have to keep going and be willing to stand up because a lot of people do have that book, but they lack the courage to put that first step. And they're a little worried about what people will say. And when you publish, there's a bit of a target and you have to be able to stand in your story and to be able to be willing and my books have gotten progressively more vulnerable, especially the one with the TED Talk. But it's the willingness and it's the most popular to be able to share your story. And sometimes our stories are not always the positive ones that people find the most inspiration from. And you have to be willing because it's a gift. The question is, do you have the courage to share it? And some people, it takes a little heavy lifting. So I like, Linda, you can teach them how to get their story on stage. I teach them how to put it in print. You teach them how to be able to speak to it. <laughs> I like that. I like and, that. And and uh, you know, Karen, you had you. I've been watching just from a distance, but you've had the success with this movie that you made, right? Oh, right. Yeah. There. I, yes, I, I wrote a, a screenplay that's doing actually very well, based on a true story, and it's called Battle Cries. And um, yeah, I'm making it my mission to get it made to the big screen. But right now, it's in the screenplay version, which is the written word. Um, you know, so but it's doing very well. It's won uh, several awards, so it's an award-winning screenplay. Um, and I'm, you know, on a mission to get it in the right hands, as they say, right, to um, get it on the big screen. So that but is the power is in that joy. story and the fact yeah. that you didn't know how to do a screenplay. And I want to highlight oh. that because you had to teach yourself and you had to go out and find experts and you had to go out. Here's the big thing. Ask for help. Not right. many of us like to do that. And we certainly don't want to do it publicly. But this is part of where you're looking to share your story is I didn't know how to do any of this stuff. None of us did. And we like the after the fact. We don't like the becoming the expert part. It's painful. It takes a lot of lifting and a lot of false starts and a lot of courage. And so the fact that you're still sticking with it, people understand you don't become an overnight success. It takes years, but it only takes years because you were willing to have that first step and to do something you've never been. And so how far out of your comfort zone are you? Impressive. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, they say it takes like 10,000 hours, I think, to become, uh, you know. <laughs> Malcolm Gladwell, absolutely. A lot, yeah. Absolutely. So where so, are you there? About 5,000, maybe? Half <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I lost count. <laughs> so, so in New York, you've been uh, teaching several people how to become the entrepreneur that they want to be. I got, I was fortunate enough in Phoenix to sit in on one of your breakout sessions about uh, building your own business. And I loved what you did with your brainstorming sessions. Um, so, I mean, you even have a book on that. Right. Um, so yes. what um, have you found to be kind of one of your success stories of someone who just, you know, wasn't sure if they could do it? And then, you know, you know, after working with you, kind of the light bulb, the aha moment happened. 
I think I think the hardest part for any person that, that has an idea is to take the first step and to believe enough in themselves to take that first step and then keep on running. Because once you take that first step, the path is, is, is there. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, so and, and everybody has their own pace. Uh, some people takes a year, some people do it like in a day. And so you see, and then getting to that point where they believe enough on their ideas and, and they trust themselves to make it happen, that's amazing. Yeah, I like think that. we should I mean, do. We all have our unique talents and experiences. Yeah, we are unique, right? We are a work of art because everybody has a different uh, background, a different culture, own DNA. But then when you add our life experiences, even your twins, you're going to be, you're going to have a different perspective than anybody else on the planet. So, yeah, that's amazing. That's what makes us. Yeah, unique. confidence. That confidence is huge, confidence. right? To be able to believe in yourself and your skill sets and your passions uh, to, to make that first step. That That is a scary thing a lot of times. So well, that's we, huge. Yeah, we can all be our that's own worst true. enemy to try to talk ourselves out of things when other people don't even see it that way. But we just, we're hard on yeah. ourselves naturally. Absolutely. So Linda, and how do you keep going when you have the hardest challenges in there what's your one go-to trick that you like to do when the going gets tough linda goes shopping or <laughs> <laughs> no i think that you know my back my background career as you mentioned was uh was tv news i was a news anchor and so i had a live show every morning for four hours no five hours it transitioned into a more conversational one and so you'd constantly be interviewing and having to be on the top of your game and i think that some days you just have a bad day but you can't uh, you can't show it and right. so so you would, we would just go into the, the, uh, the bathroom and we would tell jokes and we just sit there and just kind of put that laser focus. It's like going on stage or addressing a room or anything where you just put all of that stuff aside and you take a deep breath and you say, this is my moment. This is my moment. And it's live and I'm not going to go backwards. I'm not going to go into the future. It's right now. And you just focus on what it is you want to say with authenticity. And so, yeah, not every day is going to be great, but it's, um, it has always helped me because sometimes I'd get better flies, even after years of doing news. If it was a live wow. crowd and there were thousands of people or perhaps in Houston at the event when I'm emceeing or up on stage, you know, you get those butterflies. But you just think what a tremendous opportunity to be invited here, to be here, to have this platform when so many other people don't have that platform. Gratitude. That's a big lift. And that's a big strategy is because if you're grateful for what you have, you'll get more of it if you and that's the, the secret of attraction. So I love that. But it's the mind game, right? It's the mm -hmm. mindset. We are our own worst enemies. You've got to make that shift. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and you got to push through the down days, too. I transitioned into uh, real estate recently, and it's a completely different field. And I think, here I am after 24 years of news, and I'm doing this new thing. And I have to start with all this paperwork, and it's different. And the whole arena is different. And I'm embracing it. And I'm thinking, OK, Houston, <laughs> I got you. All right. So it's, uh, it's interesting. Well, I think that's the benefit of the military expertise that we have for both the Marines and Dr. Karen in New York is because we are so used to, even as the spouse, when I had to move every two to three years, you're reinventing yourself all the time because of new assignments, new shifts in the world, dynamics. Every two to three years, I used to hate it. Don't tell anyone my first couple of years because it was, if you loved a job, you had to leave. If you hated it, it was great. But now after every two to three years, I start getting itchy. I start getting antsy going, isn't it about time to just dig into something else, right? And now instead of having one career, I think I'm on eight right now and I've <laughs> learned to embrace it. But it's tough when you have to kind of start over. But if you embrace it as a, oh my gosh, what I get to do rather than what I have to do, I actually am now looking to reinvent myself another time. But that's what the military taught me. And I didn't embrace it initially, but I certainly did eventually, so. Yay. Exciting. <laughs> <laughs> So go, Linda, real estate. I love it. Yeah, and, you know, I, I already have the courage. That's awesome. It is definitely, a, well, it's a different arena, yes. But you guys, you so you moved, to, is this the longest place both of you, New York and, and Karen, have lived in one place? It, 
it definitely is for me. I realized that because uh, during the pandemic, you know, in the shutdown, um, they said like a lot of people started making moves because, you know, you're around your family like 24 <laughs> seven and you realize your house just isn't big enough for all those people. <laughs> and that's kind of what happened to us is, you know, I was in, I had bought a, a, a new house during the shutdown for more space, right? Cause we're both working from home and, you know, we're doing home school from home and it was just like, we needed more house. Um, but when we moved from the other house, I was like, wow, you know, we had been in that house for four years. That was actually the longest I had ever been in one house. Actually, my whole life, because <laughs> I was raised in a military family, too. And I was like, wow, I can't believe it. That's crazy. Four years. So I've actually been uh, here in Maryland now for five years. And that's like Ooh. the longest I've ever been in one place. I'm four and a half right now. And five years is my limit. And I'm getting there going, isn't it time for us to go somewhere? <laughs> you know, yeah. I understand that itchiness. It's weird wow. to get used to it. Yorka, how long have you been where you are in Miami? Um, actually, almost seven years already. Yeah. Wow. It feels wrong. <laughs> and like every day I want to move <laughs> You get used to that every day lifestyle. But you travel quite a bit, New Yorker. So you're not actually well, well, in Miami that much. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that that's that's what make it, you know, a little bit bearable is you know, when I get anxious I need to just go find somewhere to go. Yeah. And, you travel a lot. You know. So I think you gotta stay busy and you and you mix it up. All right, you get bored easy, I think. Get it's nice to meet others like that because it's not a typical lifestyle. I can't identify with people who've been in the same job for 30 years in the same place. That mm -hmm. to me is just, I can't even wrap my heads around. But I'm like you, next week I'm going to Philly, the following week I'm in Seattle and I'm going country to country. It's like we get to travel again. I'm so excited. <laughs> I know, I know. That yeah. is nice. You know, welcome you, back to oh, living. You guys had asked me a question about. Um, I have Oh, go ahead. No, I mean like, um, like when I go, when we go to Houston, I'm planning already to go from Houston to Boston, from Boston to DC, to DC to Miami. See, uh, so you that's gonna bring gonna clothes. It's gonna be hot and then <laughs> cold. <laughs> you can't sit still. That's why I told her. Yeah, but that's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> but go ahead. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say when you guys were asking me about how do you get through hard times, I mean, everybody, or what I've heard before in some of the previous talks was perseverance, you know, overcoming obstacles and things. Do you guys have examples of how you've done that, maybe transitioning into civilian life or, you know, whatever it may be? Sure. Uh, I don't want to jump on e either one of you. I I mean, I, I think there's been highs and lows, you know, throughout my lifetime, my career changes and transitions. Um, the biggest things I could say is just what, you know, Dr. Cheryl was even commenting on is the willingness to reach out um, is very hard at times. Uh, and especially I think for women veterans, because we're so independent and, um, you know, used to having to like just do it and not want to ask for help, um, that made it even harder. But I think that if you kind of build a network um, and, and good friends around you um, and, be, and the willingness to kind of like ask somebody um, to, for support when you need it, um, that helps. And then also that whole thing about, you know, it gets overplayed sometimes, but, you know, about like when you're on the airplane, they say, put your mask on first and then help others. But you do have to do that, you know, especially as mothers, you know, if you can't take care of yourself, you can't take care of your kids. And so, you know, once I became a mother, I really, really kind of leaned on that because I was like, you know, if I'm working too hard and I'm not sleeping, I'm not eating the right things. I'm not exercising. Like I get really short tempered. I get irritable. Then I'm not healthy to take care of my kids. Um, it's kind of the same thing. If you're not doing the healthy things you need to do for yourself, then the people around you just aren't getting the best of you. And so it's kind of like at some point you have to start putting yourself first and don't think of it as like you're being selfish. Like you kind of just got to take care of you sometimes. So 
That's Absolutely. tough, isn't it? Work-life balance. It's not just a cliche. It's a hard part. And we do feel selfish as if, gosh, I'm going to go have a cup of tea. I'm going to go take a long bath. I'm going to go just take time out. And we do have a little bit of guilt when we feel. But I have learned that if I don't plan fun, it doesn't yeah. happen. Right. And, and that is so sad. <laughs> you can fill your well with good friends or whatever, a spa or something, even if it's for a couple of hours. And I come back and recharged and, and better to present to my family and loved ones. Sure. Yeah. I mean, like there's so much inconvenience like that matters. You know what I mean? Like if, mm -hmm. if you can find a way to make little things in your life more convenient um, it's worth it. I mean, like, I mean, now I think we all kind of have to like have maybe food delivered to your house just because of things. But I mean, before, I mean, that's like the little stuff to think about. If you can have your groceries delivered, it just saves you time from having to go and get them or, you know, it, just the little things of convenience can save you a lot in the long run. Um, and just think of ways that you could save yourself time. I mean, even like having somebody come and like, clean your house for like one day a week or something i mean because i think like sometimes we're just like really hard on ourselves like oh i can't i shouldn't be paying for that or i shouldn't i shouldn't have somebody watch my kids i need to do that myself but it's like convenience like you sometimes you just need like a couple hours to yourself and if you could just like you know get away for a minute do it like sometimes you just need to do it and don't, somebody, need, somebody needs yeah. a story. Like, don't beat yourself up about it. And I think, like, a lot of women, like, they just don't want, they just can't wrap their heads around, like, the matter of convenience. Like, sometimes just do it. New York, I like uh, it. What are you thinking like over it. there? I, I think that's so much so true. And I learned that very early. I was single mom for a long time. I still am. So I always had it to go back. Like I didn't, you know, I didn't have time to get the kids ready and get the stuff ready because then always everything goes wrong. So I had like five or ten bags already prepped all the time. <laughs> I needed to go somewhere specific. I already have a bag for that. <laughs> you know, it's funny. So, I never thought of yeah, it that way. I've learned to I keep a bag from my military days and it just sits there and all I do is add to it and it's always there. And I never even noticed that it's just a habit. Wow. There you go. <laughs> So you said I got a yeah, bag having that. that free packing. Uh -huh. <laughs> but when you go to these multiple trips, you have I, to send the bag I, I ahead. So you have the winter that... clothes in Boston, and then you've got the Florida clothes. You're going to have to have multiple bags. How do you bring them all with you? <laughs> well, it, it goes down to the key scenes that you need. You will always need your passport. And you always Thank need you. Uh, to have the toilet and all the all the extra essentials that you need and then you can always add at the last minute but now you have less pre uh pre things that you have to do so you just make it easier whatever is important to you that you need to take with you um just re have it ready and i think you're be add, careful about shipping stuff right now too because it's everything's delayed i don't know about you guys but <laughs> things aren't getting to where they are supposed to go on time these days no, I've had some trouble with the publishing world around that as well. I even tried to surprise one of my college roommates and I tried to get a card and everything sent to her when she was going for surgery with her mother in there. And it took three weeks. I'm going, it's not going to China, people. I couldn't even do the surprise. It was just a card I thought would get there to lift her spirits while she's going through this. And it took three weeks to get there. So her mom got it. Not she, you know, she had it. So you can't even time this postal stuff anymore. So takes a lot of planning. <laughs> right. <laughs> but anyway, I'm excited to see all of you at this event. It's uh, I am too. It's going to be exciting. I think it's going to be bigger and it sounds like there's some amazing performances as well. Yeah, we have uh, Christine Van Lu coming again to do the aerial performance mm -hmm. and Jessica Muse will be singing, you know, she's the American Idol top 4 uh, uh, winner, so that's awesome. Um, so we did get to see like the sneak preview of Christine Van Lu's performance in Phoenix. Uh, so I'm not sure if Julie released any of those, uh, any of that footage, but it was really awesome. And so she was like, this is the shortest ceiling I've had to perform on in Phoenix. 
And we were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> they make it look so, she makes it look so easy. I mean, if I try attempted that, I would just fall right on my head. There's just. Yeah, she said it's equivalent to doing like um, pull-ups for like eight minutes straight. She was like, it's only like doing pull-ups for eight minutes straight. And I was like, Oh, really? Um, okay. <laughs> Is that all? That's, like, I don't think I could do it for eight seconds straight. But um, she's just extremely um, strong and um, very, very awesome to you know just watch her do her craft. Uh, she has an amazing story as well. I mean, her and Jessica, um, just beautifully talented ladies. Uh, so they'll both be performing. I have some other outstanding, you know, speakers coming. Shannon Nealon, uh, the, the founder of the Happy Bean Project. I think she'll also probably be bringing some happy beans, hopefully, uh, so you can try out some of her uh, coffee. And I think Katie Gonzalez, the founder of the nonprofit Little Angels uh, Service Dogs. So that'll be a special treat for us. And also Dr. Tiffany Tajari, uh, the CEO and co-founder of Stand Up and Recovery. So that's um, our, our headliners. Um, also, you know, Dr. Julie, uh, Dr. Karen, myself, and Linda Martin, five-time Emmy-nominated television <laughs> news anchor. Um, that's nothing to um, miss. So, um, you, know, you know what's so great about all of it is, I don't know about if you felt the same way when in these past events, but you can never judge a book by its cover. You can never know until these people go up on stage and tell these incredible stories and everyone has one that's so interesting and inspiring. And I just, I remember there was this one who was very quiet backstage and I was introducing her and I, I had never heard her speak. And I thought, you know, I wonder how she's going to, and she went up there and just turned the lights on and it was the most incredible speech. And everybody was just, you know, practically doing a standing ovation. That was so amazing and tears in their eyes. And it was just, I'm sure there's, there's many of those that you guys have heard as well, but it just, oh, I, I love to go and I know there are still seats to fill. Oh yeah. Yeah. And again, remember, you know, all of this is our main fundraiser for Synergy Learning Institute, you know, our nonprofit vocational college. Um, it goes to support scholarships for our veterans so they can get professional development um, and take courses to help in their transition. Um, you know, so they want to build their own companies. They want to, you know, just build, you know, up on their life skills. Um, you can check out our website for Synergy Learning Institute.org. Uh, but you can register for the event at www.leadandempowerher.com. I see the ticker there on the screen. <laughs> um, and so, it, and in Houston, we have um, our event there, but- um, November you know, 6th. November 6th. Um, and then on November 7th, if you wanna come in and you wanna stay longer, uh, we've teamed up with the HAVE event, um, which is the Humble Alpha uh, veteran empowerment event, and they are are going to be um, doing some more uh, business related uh, empowerment for veterans, and they have also the street shares doing kind of like the it's top kind of a contest, three. right? Right. Yeah. Uh, they relate it to kind of veteran Shark Tank, but it's called street shares, and they have I think it's a total of twenty five thousand dollars that they're giving away to pitches from veteran business owners. So um, it'd be I'll good to come pick it up. Say again. Oh, yeah? Are you going to be I there? I send my application. You put oh, your application. Yeah. yeah, so applications, I think, ended yesterday at midnight for the actual pitch contest. But I mean, it'd be awesome to come check them out and support other veterans that are pitching in the contest. Um, and we hope that you know we'll continue to have them join us um, at other Lead and Empower Her She Talk events. Um, so we'll be in Houston, November, and then we'll be in Florida in December. And if you want us in your city, just reach out to us. Um, you can find me on social media at Dr. Combat Pink. Um, that's DR Combat Pink. So you can uh, reach out to me there and just direct message me. Um, and of course you can reach us always on yeah. the website. So, um, 
let's see what um, other information you think we need to give. You know, America? I think. I think that you can find every, I mean, the website's really well done. If you go to lead and empower her, don't forget the her part.com. Some of my friends have said, well, I, I went on and it wasn't the right, you kind of lead and empower her. Right. <laughs> yeah. The schedule's there. You just hit register. The speakers, yep, the breakout the sessions, everything. It's a, it's a full day. It goes by really fast and it's very informative. Depending on what you want, you can go and hit all of the different ones and, uh, and come up to anyone and I've just met some amazing people at, at each of these events. And I'm so glad that it's in Houston now that I moved to Houston right before the pandemic. And so it'll be great to see all these familiar faces and meet new ones. Right. And if you're flying in for some who are coming, remember that it's the Bush airport in Houston. I didn't realize that there were two airports because I haven't been to Houston yes. in a long time. And so I had my flights booked at the other one. Julie was very quick to help. I'm like, Ooh, cause it's just closer. So the details are all on the website as well, but the Bush airport is close. It's about 20 minutes from the venue, I think, something like that. Right, yeah, you know, Houston is very big and very spread out. And so it's, it's uh, there, there's a lot of space here, yeah. So one airport can be pretty far from the other and um, still be in Houston. <laughs> and so you're gonna yeah. promise us great weather and sunshine, right? Linda? I hope so, because it is raining right now, but it's been really hot and muggy here. And so it's supposed to be in the 70s yeah. this weekend, which is gonna be, great hopefully it'll stick that way through the event yeah i won't okay. tell you the weather in chicago we're going to get our first 40 day sometime tonight at 40 really? like, yeah that white stuff sometimes it hits by halloween so we're heading to that time of year <laughs> i'm in oh, chicago nice. by the way so we so have so chicago we have miami we have maryland and houston look at, yeah, look at this course. presentation yeah, it is the kind wonders of, like, of Zoom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're all over. That's, That's awesome. true. Yes, but it's so great to see all of you. It yeah, is, and we're so excited to, to have the stories that we'll share for the folks, so that we can hear your story. Because no more, no more important story is than yours. We want to hear it and want you to tell it, and we'll give you the courage if you need it. Because I know it's tough to be vulnerable, particularly when some of the stories are not very pleasant, but the idea is that you are able to overcome them. And that's the inspiration. If we all can do it, I promise you, you can too. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Thank well, you Yorka, so much. thank you so much for having us yes, all thank together. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's been a I, pleasure. I'm looking forward to meet all of you in um, person. Yeah, uh, great. I can look Houston. Houston will be here before Houston we know coming it. Too. I could use one of those heart-shaped umbrellas here in Houston right now. Yeah. <laughs> They're great, well, I've been bringing them. <laughs> Good. All right. All right. Will we be able to see this later on? Is this something that's going to be on your site? Yeah, it's going to be recorded. So I'm actually going to leave it uh, there. And uh, I'm going to post it. And you guys want the link, you can get the link as well. Okay. Outstanding. Well, thank you for the invitation. It's lovely to spend this afternoon. And ladies, I look forward to seeing you in Houston. So take good care and enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you in Houston. Bye, Bye, Bye now. Safe flights. Fly. All right.